If you're looking for a smart, hardworking assistant, look no further than Ashjin. Ashjin. How do you pronounce her name? I thought Elena was her real name, but it's actually Ashjin. Elena is a name that Ashjin chose when she left home to go to college and also throughout her career as a Rhine Lab researcher. The more you know. As far as welfare operator goes, I have to say that Ashjin is the best looking one. Or maybe it's just me because I like blue haired waifus. Anyway, in this video, I want to go over Ashjin's skills and talents to determine if she is worth investing. Ashjin is a 5 star chain caster, which you can obtain by completing the Dorothy's Vision stage in DV4. Generally, chain casters are weaker than a typical AoE caster, so I tend to use them against hordes of light enemies. Normal attacks can jump between 3 enemies at Elite 1 and 4 enemies at Elite 2, and the damage falloff is 15% for each jump. For example, Ashjin's attack at Elite 2 Pot 1 is 630, and each jump her attack is reduced by 95. Each attack also inflicts slow for a brief period, but it's barely noticeable if you are in the heat of battle. I'm also quite surprised that Ashjin's DP cost is one more than Passenger, both at pot 1, but since most players will most likely pot 6 Ashjin, her DP cost is reduced to 31, which is the same as Passenger pot 6. Asjen's talent, Passion for Research, grants her attack speed for every 15 seconds Asjen is on the battlefield. This is indicated by a soft blue glow on Asjen's wand. It's a bit hard to see, so you need to squint a bit. In order to take full advantage of this talent, you need to ensure that Asjen can survive for at least 75 seconds. Which is not easy sometimes because it feels like she's made out of paper. The reason why stacking attack speed is important is because Ashjin can deliver more damage in a shorter time and the slow effect from her normal attacks will be more impactful. Sort of, it's still barely noticeable. Ashjin's talent does not improve from potential like most other operators, instead she gets an attack boost which she really needs. Ashjin's first skill, Double Diversion, multiplies the damage of her next attack targets two enemies simultaneously, and the attack jumps between four enemies. The skill triggers automatically, and it can store some charges. The maximum number of charges you can carry is 3 at Mastery 3. As long as Ashjin hits multiple enemies, this skill provides consistent DPS. Skill 1 may seem appealing at Elite 1 because it bounces between four enemies, but at Elite 2, it seems obsolete because Ashjin's attack also bounces between 4 enemies as part of her trait. On top of that, the damage multiplier is very low even at M3, which is kind of disappointing. Meanwhile, Passenger Skill 1 has a minimum of 150% multiplier. Yes, Passenger is a 6-star caster, but looking at the difference between these two operators, it's staggering to see how big of a difference the multipliers are between 5 star and 6 stars. Skill 2, Starlight Intersection, is a manually activated skill that expands Ashjin's range. Equivalent to an anti-air sniper, buffs her attack and targets two enemies. Since it's a manually activated skill, the damage output is more consistent and significantly higher than skill 1. When Ashjin is fully stacked, Skill 2 can easily take care of hordes of weak enemies with a little to no problem, and some tougher enemies as well like this power armor. The expanded range means Ashjen can cover more ground and therefore able to reach further targets. After using Ashjen for a few days now, I much prefer Skill 2 over Skill 1 for its better consistency, damage output, and overall better control. Obviously, you would think that you should invest in Mastery 3 for skill 2, right? Well, yes and no, because the benefits you get from Mastery is underwhelming. It does increase the buff multiplier, but I wish it also increases the duration of the skill or reduces the SP cost. Skill 1 has slightly more benefits at M3, with the addition of an extra charge and reduction in SP costs, but overall, the Mastery benefits is very lacking. So yeah, level 7 is good enough 
But if you have some spare materials for mastery, don't let me stop you. As Jen's module removes the damage falloff in her normal attack. At the time of writing this video, I haven't unlocked As Jen's module yet, but I can tell that by removing the biggest drawback of chain casters, this module would be a massive upgrade to As Jen. Upgrading the module improves As Jen's talent as well, allowing her to stack more attack speed, and does it a lot quicker too. On top of that, she gets an extra boost in HP and attack. If you are planning to use Ashton as your daily drive caster, I highly recommend that you get the module ASAP. In fact, if you're using any chain caster on a daily basis, get the module anyway because it helps improve their normal attacks. So, is Ashton worth building? Yes, Ashton is an operator worthy of investment. Chain casters are notoriously known as weaker than AoE casters, but some of them are stronger than you thought. Ashgen does require some investment into her module and skills in order for her to truly shine, but in the end, those investments are not gone to waste. I am aware that Godsenger is the most powerful chain caster, and no surprise that there is a high demand for him, but Ashgen is cheaper to build, and best of all, you get her for free just by playing the game, and you don't have to suffer the bullshittery of raid ops. Personally, Ashgen will be my main chain caster for the time being because I don't have Godsenger, and the other chain casters I have are really bad in my opinion. So, yeah, that's all I have to say about our beloved scientist Burb. Share your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.